Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video doing the ECM Dove Extended Forecast for UK and for the rest of uh, Europe for today's uh, video. So uh, this is your 30 day slash 42 day European outlook. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first, video sale 6 a.m. upload with a little bonus video looking at Easter uh, part two of the Easter countdown. We have a 10 to 14 day for you as well later on this afternoon. So if you could please like, share, subscribe on videos. Thank you so much everybody. Uh, do that. Thank you so much to ecm.int for supplying the charts as well. Thank you so much, EC. Right, going to start off uh, with the week one mean cell pressure anomaly for Europe. It's taking us from the 27th of uh, March to the 3rd of April. So, uh, low pressure dominating across much of the north and the west of Europe in the weekend. We have got an area of high pressure blocking up towards northern Scandinavia and we've got a big ridge of high pressure down towards Spain. And Portugal from the Azores, looking very westerly across most parts of the Europe in the week ahead. Uh, this is how the 500 millibar height anomaly is looking from the North Pole view down. And uh, again, we see that we've got lots of uh, low pressure blavish heights in the North Atlantic and into the North and Western Europe as well, with high pressure down towards the South and the Southwest. So winds coming in from off the Atlantic a little bit like that. So temperature anomaly is not like this. Cold for Scandinavia. We have got a cold week. Um, we are having a cold week, I suppose, as it is this week. Um, cold week across Scandinavia and uh, the northeast of Europe as well, around the Baltic Sea states. And extending a little bit down the eastern side of uh, Europe, down to the Balkans, for example, a bit of a cold side. The mildest temperatures are out in the west, so Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal, into the low countries of the far west of Germany. That's where the mildest temperatures are uh, this week. And also into the Med as well, the central western part of the Med with above average temperatures. It is a bit cooler though over on the eastern side of the Med, and generally cool here between um, sort of the Asiatic and uh, the Black Sea as well. But the coldest uh, temperatures uh, are across the far north and northeast of Europe. Precipitation-wise, a bit of a freeway split so up towards Scandinavia, particularly central northern parts of uh, Norway and up into central uh, Sweden even. Um, we have uh, drier conditions, also drier in the southern and southwestern part of the Med, Spain, Portugal, into south, central Bowl, looking generally quite dry through there. But in between, we have a large swathe of above average rainfall, or above average precipitation uh, this week. So uh, wet through from the UK, Ireland, and France, in west, all the way over towards the Black Sea and the Ukraine and west of Russia in uh, the east there. So, you know, many parts of uh, Europe actually coming out with a wet week. Where it's cold enough, there will be snow involved with that thing. So, of course, with the marginal temperatures out west, primarily, we're talking about rain. Right, week two will be the 3rd to the 10th of April. Quite a significant change this week. Low pressure begins to get blocked out into the Atlantic and into the uh, southern, southwestern part of Europe as high pressure takes over across Scandinavia and into the Norwegian Sea. That will start to, uh, that will start to send the wind into more of an easterly direction. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that, again, showing above average heights extending through the north of Europe in towards the North Atlantic and all we see and out towards Greece. Some high pressure left down towards Spain and Portugal, wind generally coming in from an easterly uh, direction. So the week two temperature anomaly looks like this. Uh, generally turning cooler across most parts of Europe, it would be cool. Temperatures extend from uh, Scandinavia right the way down towards the Asiatic and Italy, and then back through Germany into uh, much of eastern France and into the Low Countries as well. So with those easy winds, most parts of Europe are turning cooler. For the UK and Ireland, we see temperatures still above average for Ireland, beginning to cool down or go closer to normal for the UK. But the warmest temperatures to average look as though they're down across Spain, Portugal and the southern part of the Mediterranean into northern Africa, still quite warm there. And over on the extreme eastern side of Europe from the Black Sea um, and, and northwards in towards uh, Russia in particular, we see significantly above average temperature there. But overall, quite a cold week come next week across much of Europe. So, wise it's turning drier 
as well. Although still wet here in the far east and southeastern part of Europe from uh, the Asiatic and the Balkans to the Black Sea and up towards Ukraine, southwards and towards Greece and Turkey as well. See above average rainfall through there, drier through the central and western bowl of the Mediterranean back towards Spain and Portugal. And then, of course, we've got Scandinavian High, we find much of northern Europe turn drier uh, as well, particularly focusing. Or Norway, possibly Scandinavia, possibly the Baltic Sea states, of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania as well. And uh, drier conditions are seen. What's happening here? What's going on? Is that working soon? Right, let's get rid of that. Sorry about that, everyone. I don't know what happened to my highlight of that. Um, right, so uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so uh, generally uh, drier uh, across northern parts of uh, Europe and uh, also into the west of Europe as well. Right, okay, week three. Going to be the attempt of the 17th of April. So we find high pressure focus now around Greenland and Iceland. Otherwise, the signal is weakening. This high pressure probably still bring quite chilly weather into the north and the west of Europe. I would have thought the 500 millibar heights look like that. So uh, we've got a trough into the north of Europe. That would be a cold trough, bringing probably late winter conditions into the far northeast of Europe. This ridge out in the west, extending up towards Greenland, so in between probably quite chilly across northern parts of Europe. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. So it still looks cold for uh, Scandinavia there and into the extreme uh, north east, into Finland in particular. Um, now down with south, which is southern Europe, looks quite mild. Maybe going a little bit milder for uh, UK, Ireland, France as well, although it is a weak signal. Otherwise, many other parts of Europe have no signal. Uh, you know, the further up we go, of course, the signals get weaker. I reckon still probably this is going to be quite a cold week for northern, northeast Europe. Maybe a little bit milder through southern and western parts of Europe. And uh, the temp the precipitation, I should say, looks uh, like that. So signals getting weaker, uh, relatively dry up here. And probably hints at being a little bit on the drier side through the west of Europe as well. And then over on the eastern side of Europe, I have no idea what's happening with my highlighter. The eastern side of Europe looks a little bit more unsettled. Right, week four will be the 17th to the 24th of April. Very weak signal now. Goodness gracious, just some low pressure down towards Spain, Portugal, otherwise not much to work on uh, from a mean sea level pressure perspective. That's 500 millibar heights, again, showing that area of low pressure down towards Spain, Portugal, some high pressure over towards the eastern part of Europe from the Balkans, down towards Greece, Turkey, Romania, and whatnot. Um, otherwise, quite a weak signal, though, uh, there. So, the temperature anomaly. It is a weak signal, but it also, I think, it's getting a little bit less cold. So, so still maybe a little bit on the cold side in extreme north and northeast Europe, but otherwise, it looks like the temperature anomalies are becoming milder, especially for more southern and eastern parts of Europe. And precipitation-wise, we don't see much signal, but it is wetter uh, in the uh, west and southwest. So, France, Spain, Portugal getting the wetter conditions there. Very weak signal though. Right, that's your 30 days. Look ahead done, but let's have a look at weeks 5 and 6 before we go. So, uh, week 5 is the 24th of April to the 1st of May. Again, very weak signal, so I'll just add in a question mark. Uh, the 500 millibar height anomaly, again, shows nothing of any particular usefulness. So again, let's just put in question mark. The temperature anomaly... You know, very weak signal. It does look relatively uh, warm in the, uh, or mild in the west and across the southern parts of Europe, but it is uh, a really weak signal that we have there. And the precipitation are doubling, not much of a signal. So, very, very mysterious week five. And then week six is the first to the 8th of May. And again, nothing really doing, is there? So, once more, let's add in a question mark and uh, go to 500 millibar. Heights there not showing much either, but they do have some low pressure to the north, so that could imply that jet stream going back northwards again, uh, or going northwards, so that might start to allow the Azor time to begin to reach in Western Europe. There's no particular sign of that. Temperature anomaly generally looking uh, weak, but it could be a bit milder, particularly across southern parts of Europe, and temptation wise. Just a little bit on the wet side for northern 
a Western Europe, but again, very, very weak signal there. I don't think the has got much of an idea from week four onwards, actually. It's the first three weeks that's looking pretty straightforward, and then uh, we lose the signal the further out we go. Right, so that's your extended European outlook for uh, this week. We do it all over again next Tuesday. As always, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And we will be back a little bit later on with the Dane to 14 day, including all of the regular features. So come back for that one. For this week's extended European Outlook, that's all for now. And uh, thanks so much.